Hey guys, it's Oat Milk here, and I just wanted to put together a video to explain the build a little bit and go through clutter items as well as how I put together these cabinets and the open window. So over here we have a glade vase. We have another glade vase here that's just been sunken in a bit to the counter. Underneath this glade vase here, we have a five ages, this book right here, that's just been sunken down so you can only see the top book. Next to it here we have this cute mug and coaster that is a part of the Alpine breakfast. And then underneath we have this green tray that is made out of two bread racks. If I remove this window here, maybe you can see a little bit better. There you have it. There's two bread racks, one making up the front portion of it as well as the actual surface of the tray. And then another one that's just this back border so that we can make this custom sized tray. Over here we have the unsorted candles right here. Now let's move on over here. Um, actually no, let's go over here because the sun is a little bit blinding right now. This is the sink. So another Glade vase right here. Just put on the counter underneath. Same thing as this vase over here. It's just sunken down so that it looks a little bit different from just placing it up above. Next to it, this little flower here is the festive sushi balls. Um, it's put so that you don't see the rest of the items as well as the mat. For the actual faucet, we have the L tap here. And then next to it, we have the Hingen cleaning supplies. There's two of these here and they're dyeable, so I've dyed them black to match as close as possible to the ale tap. And above we have the Hingen scroll that acts as a paper towel roll. And next to it we have this empty dish which is the Bismarck Eaton. And then we have this Mim lantern right here that is supposed to just be a sponge of sorts or a stainless steel scrubber if you will. And here we have a towel hanger that's just been um, sunken a little bit in to the sink so that you don't see the brass embellishment there at the back. Inside the sink we have an incensory here. I can't really select it but hopefully you can see that right there to be the uh, a drain for your sink. Here on the floor right here this is a card paper box. Above it I've floated a basket of flowers and then also another uh, oasis face. Any vase would have done the job. Because this paper box is here, I just needed to put this vase straight up on the floor and it was hidden and it just sort of looks like a new variation on the basket of flowers. On the bottom a shelf right here, I'll jump down so you can see it a little bit better. These four items are just from one item called the cooking stove. If I go down into the floor here, you can see it right here. There it is. There we go. This is the cooking stove. I floated it basically as high as possible before these pots right here um, show up out of my floor. And then I've sort of built this counter actually around this item. Let's move on to above this. This right here is the Roland Berry Tart. Underneath it, but with it, I suppose you could say, is the giant beaver burger set. Let me go back up into the build. So, the giant beaver burger set is right underneath. I'll just move the tart to the side. So, there is the giant beaver burger set. It's been eaten so that there's just the wrapper and this little empty cup here, and that is hidden inside of the actual tart so that you only see this cute little blue bottle right here. To the side we have an alpine tea set. On this row we have these glass jars and there's five of these, one, two, three, four, five, rotated just so that you can see um, one jar of it. Above we have a start light roll cake, I believe it's called, if I can grab a hold of it, there. Yes, starlight roll cake, um, again just put in so that you can only see the plates in the front. On our top shelf, we have the Oriental Supper. It's been eaten so that there's no more food inside and they look more like decorative items. And then next to it, the bowl of Oden, also eaten. 
so that it looks more like a decorative item. And now let's go to the kitchen. It's way too bright, so I might just do a jump cut. All right, now that the sun has gone, we can go over the clutter on this side of the house. This is the milk carton. This is the classified documents. I've hidden the bell inside this pot over here so that it looks more like just loose leaf paper. This pot and pan is one item. This is the southern kitchen. I'll jump down to show you what this looks like. Um, so we've hidden everything except for the pot and pan so that it looks like it's just counter items. Now behind this we have a bunch of wine and that's made out of the spirits collection and then two chilled reds. One for each uh, wine bottle over here. Here's one and there's another one right next to it. Now over to the stove. For the stove top, I used pots of cream stew. There's one here and another one here sunken in so they only see the rim. And there's one here in the middle that's just acting as our actual pot that's on the counter. The same principle as with this vase over here and the one over the sink. Simply by sinking in the item, you can sort of create a quote, new item. And also this way, when people are walking around the build, you can actually see the contents of the pot. Otherwise, it's quite high. For the buttons, the interface, I suppose, on our stove top here, I used three of the same item. This is the spirits collection. It's this item right here. I'll grab that. And if we look at it this way, you can see that this blue bottle on the very right is higher than the rest of it. So I sunk it just so that you can see the cork at the top and that is our button here. So I put three of them because we have three stovetop places. Now, right here behind everything, this is a Crystarium, Crystarium teapot, right? That's the Crystarium teapot right here. And then underneath the stove right here in front, there is the Crystarium kitchen hanger. Also sunken in a little bit. All right, over to this counter here. We have just the open book right here takoyaki boat here this is the dishware item this plate right here of uh, mysterious items is the gold smithing bench I'll also select that for you you can see it right there it's uh, the rest of the bench has just been hidden behind the walls this item right here is the spice rack just the very top of it and sunken in so that you don't see it the actual wooden part of the rack. These two boxes right here are two disordered wardrobes. I'll jump down and show you these. I wanted to use the boxes on the top um, more to my liking, so I used one for the black box on the right and then another one for that yellow box right there. This cute little lily uh, flower uh, plate thingy is the royal plotting table. You can see that huge ass table right here. This is the royal plotting table and you can see that it has a bunch of these cute little plates on the side. Um, so I just wanted to fit in this one inside the build. The last two things over here are these uh, vases. So over here we have the Ariman vase simply plopped on the counter and then underneath this is the Mandragora queen flower vase I believe it's called. Yes, there it is. It's also just put down on the counter and same idea as with this clutter over here because I have a box underneath it helps me just hide the items without me having to do any extra floating and worry about you know the vases snapping down to the counter. Okay now on to the ivy hanging over here. These are ivy pillars. If I zoom my camera out this way you can see them. Right here, there's one pillar here and another pillar right there. Here we are. There's the ivy pillar. And um, because the way that the door has been made and it has collision and everything, the viewers can't see the actual pillars behind. Um, so that worked out well in my favor. So we only see this lovely ivy hanging out. And I think it's a really, really, really cute small detail. This is a shout out to my good friend Leo for that idea. If I rotate it, you can see pretty much at all rotations, it looks really good. 
Now as for the ceiling, let's go through that. We have here just alchemical lantern and then above to connect it into my ceiling, this is, oops, this is the imposing dimension castle vase. Um, I used this instead of the uh, candelabra that also works really well um, just because this is the tabletop item so that it's much easier to place instead of having to flip it all the way from the ground. And another reason being that this item actually has texture at the bottom, so when you're looking up at it, you can actually see the bottom. The candelabra, if I'm not mistaken, for some reason it's just completely empty at the bottom, so when you look up at it, there's just nothing there. It's a really small detail, but that's just the reason why I wanted to use this castle vase instead. For our actual ceiling, for these, these are just wooden beams right here, a bunch of them. And then for the actual texture of the ceiling here, these are mahogany bunk beds. Let me just grab one of them, if I can spell. All right, so I'll grab, yeah. So if you can see that's selected, there's just, I think, four or five right here that make up the entire ceiling. If you zoom out and if you also jump around upstairs, you can see all of them. They have a really, really, really nice wooden texture underneath. They're also dyeable. This ladder right here is also the mahogany bunk bed. Um, if I can grab that one right there, you can see it. And um, the rest of the item is hidden inside the cabinet and behind the build so that we only see the ladder protruding up front. Okay, so for the cabinets, I'm probably just gonna demonstrate how this one was made, and then um, the rest of the cabinets are made up of the same basic components and the same idea, basically, the same technique, I suppose. So I'll just put something together like this area right here. Let's go to my FC room. Here we have the basic components of the cabinets, just white rectangular partitions and hanging bookshelves and hanging cupboards. We have two bookshelves here, that's just what I'm going to be using for this cabinet setup here today. The white rectangular partitions are going to make up our vertical lines and then the Hingen bookshelves and cupboards are going to make up the actual wooden texture of the panels and stuff and then also the horizontal rails of our frames. So let's just put down our items in place. So these are going to be floated up but then uh, rotated at different heights. So we're going to put them, you know, approximately in the same place. We don't want them to be 100% flush with each other or else the wooden texture in between is going to bug out severely with each other and we don't want to see that. So we have this set up and then we can also go in and put down our vertical lines. All right, good enough. Good enough. We're going to have these two that are going to block out the sides of my cabinet. It can be, you know, however wide you'd like it to be. Let's just have this one right here. And then another one in the center. Like that. And then this last one right here, we're going to just use that as a dividing line um, to make that. We're just going to rotate that this way and then have that so that you only see a sliver right here, like that, there. Then begins the floating process. Let's just pretend also that our floor height, we're gonna put that, let's say right here. So I'm gonna just float these up so that they're about right here to the top of where my counter is going to hit. We're back and I've just floated these up so that they're the same height and then now we can go into floating these Hingen bookshelves and cupboard. 
Again, same reason why I've dyed them different colors. I'm also going to just pre-rotate them at different angles, just so that you know you make your life a little bit easier, so that you can actually easily select them. What we want to do right now, we're gonna have one of these just stay on the floor and just be our bottom rail right here, because our floor is just gonna be right underneath. And then we're gonna have another one, this bookshelf, let's say, be our actual counter, so that's gonna be right here at this level and then we're gonna just have the cupboard in the middle probably so let's just do this this is a quick float so I'll probably not cut this out let's just bring this up almost there so there let's say um, yeah let's try that let's say we do want to keep this cupboard at the top and so we'll click that to rotate it. And then we'll bring the other ones back down. Just a tad. Let's say we want that here. And a little bit more. Alright, let's try that. We'll rotate this brown one right here. And yeah, everything's staying in place. And let's go back out and in. I think this should work. Let's just rotate these. Uh, actually, no. As you can see, this was not high enough. Um, these should not be peeking out. So I'm just going to float this one a little bit higher up. Just a tad. Like that. And then we can rotate this back. This one as well. Back. And there you have it. Basically, you know, you can have these floated as high or low as you would like to create as many or as little divisions as possible. Um, you can control the width in between these two. And so that's basically how I built up the kitchen outside. And then we can also just dye these. Actually, another thing to do is take this one right here. That's our division and rotate that in so that you can see it there there now we can just dye everything to see what it would look like let's just dye this the shale brown color uh, this top one as well and then for the divide I chose a dark loam brown or a chestnut brown I think um, because the rest of the wood textures are this lighter color so I went with something dark so that it would stand out the most We're gonna make some drawer handles. Let's put that this way. And we can go in and float this one right here, perhaps. A little lower. Now I'm just going to build up the other variation of a cabinet and so we have our items right here um, the Hingen open shelf bookcase I have two right here and then a Hingen sideboard let's just place our items here place another one and then we'll put our sideboard right here a little bit in just to mimic the uh, recessed panels over here. So we have that over here as well. Basically what's gonna happen is I'm floating these up so that one of the bookshelves is the top counter and then another one is gonna be the second level underneath it. And then our sideboard is going to go in and hide the books that are on the natural item. I'm gonna just float these and be right back with you. As you can see, my vase over here popped up. It's okay, we can fix that later. Let's just lock one of them in place. Let's say this brown one is gonna be our top counter. There we go. And then let's have our lower one be maybe at the level of this rail. Again, super 
highly customizable for the sake of this tutorial let's just have it there maybe a little bit higher like that sure so that's the orange one we'll lock that one in place and we'll remember that that is about the height right under this rail right here so we'll know when to lock this Hingen sideboard in place It looks about right where it should be. Maybe a little bit lower would be better, safer. So I'll do that real quick. So let me lock that in place. And then let's just go out and back in. We're back inside the room and let's see how we did. Let's rotate these back. There's one and there is our second one. I think that works for our uh, for the purpose of the tutorial. If you wanted to, you know, put stuff in between, obviously you would have to probably lower this as well as the sideboard to match, you know, the clutter that you want to put in there. Now we can dye the other ones the right color, some shale brown, and then for the sideboard as well. Let me grab that. There we go. Now let's put in our fake floor just so that we get, you know, a sense of what we did and how this is going to look in an actual build. So we can put our floor in like so. A wall can be, you know, however far back you want. This is stays right here. Cover the sides as well. So there you can see what we just made. We have our handles here. It's not perfect, obviously, um, but hopefully it gives a, an idea of how the cabinets in the kitchen were put together. These are all the building blocks of it, and you can mix and match um, as you like. I'm all up in a cloud. For the forest floor or the garden floor, it's basically made up of a ton of wall planters and old rose planters you can see the roses right here um, and these are wall mounted items so i just storage placed them and jumped around if i wanted to have it higher or lower i can demonstrate this in the fc room as well so we have our wall planters in storage if i can spell there we go so we have two just to show you for now if i just place them from storage they'll be on the ground here which totally can work but if i jump they're higher or lower if I click a little later or a little earlier they're a little bit higher or lower so let's say I want it way up here there we go as simple as that let's say we want another one just a little bit below I'll just click until I get what I want let's say they're a little bit lower Nope. There we go. And that's that. It's as simple as that. Nothing refined about this technique, but it gets the job done. The goal of it was so that the view straight on from here, from the balcony area, um, looks as convincing as possible. So I just layered it so that we had wall planters covering up any holes and covering up basically the sides of the oriental bath that I have here. I have three of them so that I can use, uh, utilize their fog. There's one here, a second one right here, and a third one right here. Um, up here you can, you can sort of see the brown borders and um, because I have stuff in front, you don't see them anymore when you're standing back here. Another lovely item that came into great use is this sofa that has this huge um, bouquet of flowers at the top. This right here, the sofa from Ishgard Restoration, that just proved to be so useful. Um, the flowers have a glow to them so they look beautiful even in zero light at night. So there's a bunch of these strewn about. And then in the front part of the garden area here, 
I did a little bit more to cover up、um, and fill in the the gaps, basically, and have a little bit more、uh, going on, because the viewer is going to be standing here, and you know, chances are they're going to be looking down. So I didn't want to have too many holes and clearly visible items that shouldn't be there. So, for example, we have these orange flowers are just、uh, a vase. I've hidden the vase below, so you only see the flowers. And there's a wall planter that helps hide as well. We have some mammet lanterns here turned on for their glow. We have an indirect lighting. We have another indirect light up there. If you can see that right here,、uh, I think the light looks really beautiful when it's shining through leaves and foliage and stuff. We also have the dominant dogwoods. There's a ton of them in here, and then bamboo planters as well. There's one right here at the door, as well as the potted plants. As for this item right here, this thing is the miniature gold saucer, and I've just placed some wall planters and other foliage items around so that you only see the city part of it. It helps give the illusion that there's a city in the distance. I have a second one up here, just so that there's a little bit of extra glow going on. You can barely see it once you're zoomed out over here. You can see it hiding out there. Also behind, we have another MGP item. This is the crystal striking tower. That is that. Just faint, glowing blue back there. And now for the sides, these are simply verdant partitions. If I go out here, you can see a little bit clear. They just do a great job of hiding the sides of the garden so that you don't see any of the natural house, and it looks like a completely enclosed and overgrown space. I have two on each side here. And then in the back, for the full-on view, I have three, one, two, and three, so that they completely cover the back of the house. We do have shower stands, of course. There's one, two, three, four shower stands. Also, we have fool's thresholds. If I can make my way out, there we go. There's fool's thresholds hidden and just floated around on the right and left of our view, so that when daytime hits. In game, you get those beautiful god rays, and it looks more like、uh, sunlight is actually appearing out here. That was how I created this open window. I hope that this was helpful, and if you have any questions, obviously feel free to ask. And thanks for sticking around. I'm sorry that this was super long, but yeah, thanks so much, and take care.